Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Tonight's video, we're going back to revisit The Great American Wish Book from 1992. These were made by Sears, and they came out every single year before Christmas time. And this is how we told our parents what we wanted uh, by circling things in these books. Uh, this is before the internet existed. There, there was no Amazon. This was the Amazon. These had everything from clothing to guns to toys to baseball cards you name it these books probably had it more likely and there was no filling out anything online or adding the cart button it was you know you either call in with your item numbers or you fill out the order form and you send it in and wait for your stuff to get to your house back before the internet existed so uh, i figured I, I picked this up a few months ago off, off ebay for i think 15 bucks i wanted to share it with you guys Figure, let's go back and revisit 1992 together and check out the hot items of that year. So let's dive right in. So right off the bat, as soon as we turn the page, we have some electronics here. We have some very old video cameras. And now these are the old VHS style cameras. Uh, this first one is from a company called uh, LXI, which I have never heard of the company. Don't remember it from my childhood at all. And uh, an LXI VHS camcorder, 700 bucks back then. So these were pretty pricey. And now these are ones that you put the VHS tapes directly into to record video. So before high eight tapes and uh, digital and everything else, this is what uh, we had in 92 VHS uh, camcorders. They were pretty pricey back then too. And that's just page one. Here we have uh, like an index here, and uh, for some of you guys remember Federal Express, what it used to be before they changed the name or shortened it to FedEx. We get to the actual index here. Um, this is what I like. There's an entire page dedicated to toys right here. This is pretty awesome. So you can see action figures. Uh, looks like we got a good bit of pages for action figures alone. Uh, autographed collectibles, you got baseball, football, hockey, Star Trek. You got Barbies in there. Baseball cards have their own pages. Baseball, see so it's sports equipment. There's football cards, Fisher Price. They got kids' furniture in here. We got board games. Air hockey. And we have video games in here. So we'll be looking at some old Nintendo games and Game Boy. So a lot of stuff. And then uh, continues on with. Uh, one of the adult things over here. So, they packed a lot of stuff. Like I said, this is the, this was the uh, modern day, uh, this is the Amazon 1982, so. And you have uh, your actual uh, order form here, so. This is how you did it back then. There was no add the cart button. And then uh, you wrote down what you wanted and whatnot. And then, hey, look at the shipping prices. I checked these out uh, before. Uh, first class, zero to, uh, zero ounces to one pound hasn't really changed much over the years, but, uh, check that out though, Priority Mail has pretty much doubled since 92, which is pretty crazy. There's some, sending something about two pounds now is about eight bucks or more to pay your words going, so it's pretty crazy to see that. And then after that we have, uh, a Barbie advertisement here, for any Barbie fans and some more Barbie things. Not really too many girls to watch my channel, but in case there are, there's a Barbie house right there, some roller blades and uh, a bedspread and whatnot. And then we get into some toys right at the bat here. We have a walkie-talkie headset. Um, I remember this thing. I definitely wanted this when I was younger. Hot Wheels Bruno the Bad Dog Truck. 55 bucks back in 92, but this thing was pretty sick. Uh, just the design of it and whatnot, and the colors on it. I remember uh, definitely being uh, drawn in by the advertisements, the advertisements for Bruno. And then we have some like uh, some laser games here. These are kind of state of the art from back then, and uh, also another uh, remote controlled car here, Nitro Bat Squealer. Can't see, I don't really remember that one too much. And then we have a huge race car track, massive. So, right after that, more toys for kids. This thing is pretty awesome too. It's Batmobile, and it's a pedal Batmobile, so it's not a Power Wheels one. So this is one that you had to control on your own. 
there was no pushing the, pushing the pedal down and going and charging it up or anything. This is all controlled by you. Imagine rolling down that rolling down the block of that thing in '92, dressed like Michael Keaton. Pretty sick. I can't say I really remember these either. Those designs. With that Batmobile, anyways, was hundred bucks, and that would be yours. So. Much rather have that than a tricycle back at that time era, or a bike. I think it's sweet. I actually would like to have it right now, honestly, but I don't think I'd fit in it. Ride that thing to work. You imagine riding that thing to work nowadays? Pulling into a parking spot would be pretty sick. And flipping ahead, we get to some Playmobil stuff. I was definitely a fan of Playmobil myself back in the day. And their stuff used to always be expensive, though. It was always a lot more than, uh, their toy lines. I know I definitely had uh, the Ford Bravo set here. I think I actually got that for Christmas. Um, and that was, looks like it was like 80 bucks. 78 bucks for Ford Bravo. I know I definitely had this thing too, that car. And then we have some um, other items here. Lego and it looks like Lincoln Logs. And then some more Lego items. I liked Lego back in the day, but I think Garrick was more into them than I was overall. Some Rector set stuff. Whether you guys are fans of that. I never was really too into the Rector set. Uh, telescopes. For you science nerds out there. Chemistry sets. I never got two into those either. This was awesome though, and I definitely uh, asked for that and got it. The Creepy Crawler's Real Moldy Oven. I was super into that for a couple hours at least. Kind of got boring and lost its touch. I thought so at least. Once, uh, I don't know. I didn't really do too much with the bugs. I just made them and was like, okay, cool, they're done. And that was really about it. But it was something that you had to have in that time era. I still have my original one in my parents' attic. Hopefully uh, unbox that sometime soon. All kinds of stuff in here. Make your own pottery. Uh, make your own jewelry on the next page. More uh, DIY stuff. For boys and girls, Spirograph. And then you have your own woodworking tools. And then we get to uh, some sports memorabilia here. Looks like we have some uh, authentic plates here. I see a Nolan Ryan one. And... Uh, the Nolan Ryan is actually going to be 60 bucks. 60 bucks for that plate. Uh, commemorates Nolan's seven career no hitters. And then we have a Joe Montana, uh, Michael Jordan, and also a Mickey Mantle plate as well. Those are $60 a piece. The Michael Jordan plaque here. Then we have some of these porcelain cards. Eric and I come across these a decent amount of the antique balls. And they're usually pretty cheap. They're like usually five bucks. And it looks like uh, back in 92, they were 15 bucks. So they've definitely dropped down in price a good bit. And uh, we have some starting laps down here. Pretty cool. On the next page, we have some baseball cards. Um, curious to see what these are going to compare to today. We have a 1992 Fleer set, which is a pretty awful set, in my opinion. There's really nothing good in there. And uh, looking down below, whoever uh, had this magazine and this book before I did, they definitely were asking for that for Christmas because it's circled here. $48, new glossy set, 1992, 48 bucks. Um, if you're looking to buy that set now, you'd probably, you could probably buy it for about five. And then the, uh, you can also get a box of 1992 leaf. So a wax box, $55. Nowadays, you can pick one of those up for about five bucks. I actually bought it. I broke a box of Series 2 recently, about a week or two ago, on video, and uh, the box cost me five dollars. So they've come down quite a bit in price over the years. And then we have some random uh, things here. This is the $800 value or the 800 card value pack uh, with original out of print tops, Fleur Don Rust score. Assorted years, no reprints. This is $800 for uh, this lot here. And looking at the picture, uh, I see a Lou Brock reprint card, turn back the Clark card, I guess. 
And then I also see a Jose Alina 89 Tops, a Sport Flicks card, and a Kirk Gibson 89 Tops All Star card in there. So I feel like I bought those before the past, and they are always a bust. So I, th I think the Fairfield boxes of today have those crushed. Uh, and then we have a 1600 card value pack here, and that was $33. So everything in C plus 800 more cards, it's two storage boxes. Uh, and that's what you would get here. And it looks like they got a little more stars in the second picture. We got a Ryan Sandberg, 99 Russ. Uh, actually, never mind, I don't really see too many other ones. That's pretty cool though, that uh, you can buy baseball cards on these magazines. They had uh, binders and there it looks like there's a 92 Don Russ set. Uh, back then it was $57. The other set you can pick up for about five nowadays. Pretty big bust of a set. The 92 sets were pretty crappy for the most part. Um, other than the Bowman set, most of them uh, didn't have too much value. They just print so many of each card. Um, an Upper Deck 92 set for $50. Um, broke a box of those recently. A wax box would cost you about 5 bucks with those nowadays. And we also have a 92 top set for 32 bucks, which another set you can pick up for about 5 um, We have, what is this, 91? 1992 Tops Traded. Yeah, this is the 92 Tops Traded set, so I'm not really sure why it says 91 on there. It's 92 design at least. Um, so they. Bound that up, 17 bucks with 92 trade set, which actually would have been uh, a really good deal back then. You got Nomar Garcia Powers rookie card in there, and Jason Veritek, and uh, a couple others too. 92 score set was uh, $32, and it looks like this person uh, that had a magazine before, or the book before me, they uh, they asked for that one for Christmas, the 92 score set. I, I like that set a lot. I'm not really sure why it has a strong connection to my childhood. I used to love 92 score and uh, buying packs. But also, this is 91 score so that's pictured in this uh, in this book here. <laughs> so they put the wrong pictures. So 92 traded is actually showing a 91 traded box. And 92 score here is actually showing the 91 score set. Uh, at least they got these right. Everything else is right except for those ones. Baseball steel set with a thousand different original baseball cards with tops and upper deck. $70 for that. So, um, probably not getting a lot of good stuff out of there. Can't say I ever took a risk and tried it, but uh, it looks like that was on uh, this person's Christmas list for that year. So, pretty neat. That's the baseball cards. And then, turning from that page, you have more cards. You got football cards here. Uh, 92 tops football set for $29. And also a 92 upper deck set for $43 and uh, a wax box as well there. Looks like that was $43 as well. And then you have some minor league cards, some classic cards. And then you also have these cool uh, storage um, unit things for your binders and your boxes and whatnot. Uh, pretty neat. Master Collector. All sports card storage system. 30 bucks. So you basically fold that up into a chest there and I don't know, I mean, it'd be pretty heavy. Looks, I, don't, I mean, that looks kind of unstable. Was that made out of cardboard or something? If the whole thing would just collapse. Doesn't look too secure. I'd say these ones look a little more secure. I don't remember anyone having any of those back in the day. We got some old Beckett's here, with Frank Thomas on the front. And uh, looks like we have some sleeves for those. And turning that page, some Star Trek. Merchandise here for you Star Trekkies out there. Some autograph stuff. Uh, some Elvis memorabilia there. So got a bunch of a uh, bunch of DC comics and Marvel. And they were 22 pack, Marvel 20 pack collecting kit, 20 bucks. Value pack, 14 bucks. So those are pretty cool. And then we have some more on the next page. And these aren't comics, these are actually more like graphic novels or uh, just uh, younger adult books. We have a lot of Indiana Jones right here. Love Indiana Jones, huge fan. James Bond Jr., if any of you guys remember that series. Haven't seen those in a long time. And, uh, 
some other ones that I remember from the past, Babysitter's Club. And then we get to some pretty cool uh, weaponry here, the Eliminator TS-7. This thing looks pretty sick. Uh, what is this? Oh, I don't remember it's big out when I was a kid. 37 bucks. Uh, requires batteries, plastic. It's almost three feet long. So you gotta bang it. I mean, this thing is like the ultimate weapon. <laughs> I've never ever had that when I was a kid. There's probably a reason behind that. Um, some walkie talkies. And air hockey table, pool table. Um, some different electronic games here, if you guys remember these. And then we get to board games. Dream Phone. Ball, I used to always want Ball Madness. I don't know why, I just thought it was really cool. Um, Home Alone, definitely had that one and played a good bit. If you guys ever get the chance, uh, surfing YouTube, definitely check out ABGN and uh, his series, Board James. He does one on, I think, Ball Madness and Dream Phone. The Dream Phone comes to life and pretty interesting. A huge uh, AVGN fan, so I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with him. Scattergories, used to love that game. How can we uh, forget Rock'em Sock'em Robots? It's a classic. Out of control. Turning from that page, we have some more games. Mr. Bucket. Grape Escape. So we have a good bit of games on here. Pinball, uh, I used to have that one too. I want to say I asked for that one in this magazine when I was a kid. This is Tin Can Alley Electronic Target Games, 25 bucks. Um, it's like a laser game basically. You point uh, the gun at the targets and shoot them and they can't pop off there. So that's pretty neat. I think I was more stoked to have the gun and carry that around and uh, use my imagination to play with that outside. Uh, chess and some other electronic games here. Now we get into the retro gaming, Game Boy, and some handhelds. We have some uh, handhelds here in NASCAR, and we have Turtles 3. Pretty awesome. Um, for those of you who remember these games, Dr. Mario. My mom was always a big fan of that game. When we were younger, she didn't really play games, but she always played that one. Battletoads, and of course, Paperboy. Lots of classics on here for the Game Boy. I never owned one, always wanted one, but. Uh, just never had one. It's had a Nintendo at that time era. Then Sega after that. Bo Jackson for the Game Boy. Pretty sick. That game back then was 30 bucks. And flipping from that page, we have the Atari Lynx. For any of you remember that. Also never had that one either. Batman Returns was the uh, the hot movie in 1992, so there's a lot of Batman Returns stuff in here. Bill and Ted as well. There's the Bill and Ted game. And Batman Returns was $50 back then for the Atari Lynx. Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Gaiden, however you choose to pronounce it. I don't remember ever being abbreviated here. It has intense graphics and excellent sounds. Pretty awesome. And the next page, we have a Sega Game Gear, which I never had. But my brother had one too. He seemed to always have a problem with the battery or something like that on there. I remember George Foreman's Knockout Boxing. I remember that game. Ninja Gaiden again uh, with the uh, the um, dash in the middle of it there. I'm not sure why they did that. Guys, I'm sure remember this, the Game Genie. Game Genie was pretty awesome. G.I. Joe, bases loaded. Eric and I used to play that for hours back in the day. Battletoads, of course, love that game. Super Mario 3 had just come out around this time. There's Dr. Mario again. So the price of a Nintendo back then was 90 bucks in 1992. There's a Turbo Graphics 16 for 300 bucks. 
pretty short-lived system. Kind of got smashed out by Sega and the Super Nintendo. Didn't really make too many games for it to even compete. The next page we have Sega. Invader Holyfield Boxing. I remember that game. Played that all the time. Kid Chameleon. Madden 92. Pit Fighter. Which is like the pretext for Mortal Kombat. That was a big game back then. Paperboy. I remember ever playing Paperboy for Sega. I used to play it for Nintendo. I used to have it. it. Used to really piss me off because I don't think I could ever make it past the first stage. Crazy angles in that game. Absolutely crazy. Then on the next page, we have more Sega games. Toe Jam and Earl. Used to always uh, like that game. Two crew dudes. The next page, uh, you got the Super Scope. And Mario Paint. Zelda. Sim City. More Super Nintendo games. Final Fight, used to like that one, Home Alone. Paperboy 2 out now. Final Fantasy 2. Contra 3 and Castlevania 4. Pit Fighter for the SNES. Robocop 3, which is two words, not sure why that is. Street Fighter 2, which is a classic. Super Bases Loaded Baseball, which I don't remember if I ever played that one. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. WDF Wrestling. And we're getting to the action figures now, play sets. I definitely had this one. Uh, this pretty cool Cock of the Castle play set. It was $20 back then, which is a pretty good deal for the amount of stuff you get in the picture. It was very cheap though. I remember playing with it and it kind of fell apart pretty quick. Definitely had this play set too. They were pretty awesome. And uh, some more trucks. And we're getting to some cool pop culture stuff now. Do you guys remember my pal too? I just saw him in an antique ball not too long ago. I think 20 bucks in the box. I almost bought it a couple times when I went there. Um, you got bots and Kremel Crash Dummies, which I was a big fan of them back then. And this uh, this place is pretty rare now. I don't ever see this one. This is a crash test center. 37 bucks back in 92. I definitely remember owning this car as well. Um, the car was 24 bucks back then, and the crash cycle with figure was only 1999. Actually, 19 bucks, 1899. So these are pretty awesome. I'd like to come across those again in the future and uh, pick them up and start collecting that toy line as well. So eventually, I run out of uh, all the figures that I'm collecting, and uh, I need to branch off to different toy lines. Here we have American Gladiators. Which uh, I was definitely a fan of that show back in the day. I'm sure a lot of you were too. I actually just sold that uh, the Gladiator wall not too long ago on eBay. And I picked it up at uh, an, an antique ball. And I think I sold it for double what I paid for it. So that was pretty good. Some value to some of those play sets and whatnot. And we have some Marvel figures down here. Uh, Max Men, Punisher, etc. Pretty awesome. Got some Joes over here. This is one of these two, so you can check these out. Lots of Joes. Always loved my GI Joes back in the day. And some different play sets there. Flip the page, you got some TMNT. You got the party van and other vehicles um, and accessories and whatnot. And then, how much was the party van back then? 19 bucks. To buy that new the box now, you're paying three, four hundred dollars for it now. Wish I'd go back and buy a bunch of those if I knew that. So they had some different uh, series turtles that were out at this point in time from 92. The original ones came out in 88, so you have these different uh, variants of them in series and then we have the Batman Returns uh, Batcave so this is pretty awesome so it's Wayne Manor and the Batcave they made a few different ones of these they made one for the animated series and uh, they made another one as well Batman Forever this one was pretty sick I, I had one of these I'm not sure if it was this one or not so I think I still have it somewhere but uh, it's pretty cool you put Bruce Wayne in there then spin this thing around and uh, you come out as Batman you got some vehicles there 
Uh, back then, that playset was only 55 bucks. So, it probably cost you about 200 now to buy that deal with the box. And then this awesome, uh, totally awesome Duel of Dudes. It's about 100 bucks now without the box. So, uh, back then, they were 33. Definitely uh, had that at one point. Not sure what ever happened to it, but uh, hopefully I can uncover that again sometime in the future. Pretty awesome for all you TMNT fans out there. Then we have some uh, other random toys here. And get into some Nickelodeon stuff. If you guys remember uh, Nickelodeon Gak. Uh, pretty sure all the parents out there hated that because always getting embedded in the carpets and everything else. And then we have some Nickelodeon moon shoes there. Which uh, I think they're pretty short lived because of kids uh, rolling their ankles and all kinds of other uh, health hazards, safety hazards. They were $30 back then, or $40, I'm sorry, for the boot shoes. And then we have some other kids' toys, pogo sticks. There's some Nerf uh, weapons there. For any of you guys that were Nerf fans, I know I was. Didn't have a lot of them, but I had a couple. And then we get to do the uh, sports memorabilia. And we got gloves, we have T-ball, we have some a football helmet here, some footballs. And that's basically it, you guys. I just want to take you through this, take you back to the past, to your childhoods. Um, so you can check this out with me. And uh, hope, hopefully you guys like this video. I love these, vintage TMNT skateboard. That thing is awesome. Not a 9.5 inch one. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. Um, if you guys do like it, I plan on getting more in the future. Maybe next time I get like an 86 or something like that, or an 87 uh, wish book. And we'll go through that as well. So um, let me know down below in the comments, and I will talk to you guys uh, very, very soon.